I'm a property ombudsman, and property ombudsman's been around for about 30 years. It was set up originally to, as a not-for-profit organisation to provide redress for estate agency, and as Alison said, covers uh, that wider geographical remit, but we're also the only approved independent ombudsman for mandatory redress in the private rented sector. Um, helping tenants, leaseholders, landlords, as well as covering the estate agency uh, world. And last year, um, 57,000 people came to us for help, and half of that was for lettings. Um, and the rest was an almost equal balance between sales and um, residential leasehold management, with 8,000 leaseholders, which Martin will be interested in, um, coming to us for, for some help and support. We also run voluntary schemes covering everything from surveyors to build to rent landlords, and we include freehold estate managers. Um, the fact that we're an independent, not-for-profit organisation validated by the Ombudsman Association is very important because the nature of ombudsmanry seeks to address the power imbalance that Generation Rent made reference to in your previous, uh, one of your previous sessions, um, because it removes the inherent bias that basic redress processes um, contain. It removes the responsibility on the individual to be an expert and able to evidence their, um, their case. We do that for them. Um, and finally, as an ombudsman, we... Uh, offer three components to our service. So we do the advice and support function at the, be at the start of the process. We offer um, that inquisitorial approach to uh, decision making, but we also uh, gather all the data and intelligence from all of that and we use it to drive change, whether it be with the industry, working with the industry in terms of to improve standards, or whether it be with policy makers. So key issues like no DSS and no kids, which you'll have come across in, in various uh, environments come through from our casework and so they give us a solid evidence base to think about how we might want to address those sorts of things and um, unusually and I, but I think important for the committee um, we also operate uh, our own codes of practice for agents um, our sales and lettings codes are well known and we've done that in the absence of a regulator so actually it would be quite nice to have a regulator take that area of work because it's not a normal ombudsman function um, but I think all of that does give us a unique perspective when we're thinking about both regulation of, of property agents, but the, the, the challenges that we've, we've faced in the private property sector more generally at the moment.